How you, you guys doing? Keep... Uh, we're doing good. Uh, it's just two of us today. Um, what's it called? Uh, Leyland went off to Thanksgiving and whatnot, and um, Daniel, well, he's Daniel, but um, he's dead anyway. <laughs> but yeah, you... we, we're we're through here. We're at my new place at the moment with all the posters behind me and shit, and um, yeah, excited we could make this connection. Very cool, very cool. And are you guys uh, are you guys going to be off spreading the uh, disease around the country in a few days? Um, well, I got this little fancy smancy thing right here, my little uh, orange bandana. As the words of the uh, as the words of the wise are, you know, when in doubt, grab your bandana. Yeah, I'm gonna. Shoot. There we go. I'm gonna just shoot anybody who coughs, so I'm doing my part for society. Nice, nice. I saw some guy in Florida. Um, got arrested for he was he was going up to Trump protesters and breathing in their face like almost like hawking breath into their face. Yeah, so, I killed him. Yeah. yeah, you know the why does that sound like something that would happen in Florida? <laughs> because nothing is off limits in Florida. Yeah, what happens in Florida should stay in Florida. Let's hope, right? Well, that's Vegas. Yeah, it works for Florida too. Let's talk about the new video uh, for the Metallica song and how you how that came to be. All right, so um, basically uh, we started filming that at Redwood Metal Fest. That was a fun little fun little outing we did there. We'd we'd been playing that one on our tour. That was a little you know break the ice. Hey everybody, we got a cover song kind of thing. We were going about that, and uh, so we had the idea to film the video, do that one as our next thing. As for where that led to, we had a, at that point, like, um, what we had, we had started shooting the video before the song technically had started to being tracked, but we had practiced it. Like we had had to practice a lot to make sure everything was good, the right BPMs and everything. And we did that. We recorded the song, shot the rest of the video. And by the time, like we started was August of 2019. By the time we were finished, it was July of 2020. So it took a, it took us a bit, but that was definitely it was definitely a labor of love and a labor of anger. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was uh, kind of hard to actually finding people who thought it would be a good idea to cover Saint Anger in the first place. We kind of had a rotating, revolving door of crew members and like people actually helping us with the project all the time on that one. It seemed like every time we had one guy who was going to help us. Uh, just it's something fell through and we had to find somebody else and that kind of delayed it several times on top of just you know 2020 being what it is sure 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 and uh i, I looked it said you're up 4k and you got 100 down with uh 108,000 views right that's more than all of your other videos combined is that right yeah, I think we get like one dislike for every 1,000 views on that video, if not like a little bit more. Uh, why YouTube and not Pornhub or, uh, and or Facebook to host the video, as there are more than one platform now? I mean, uh, well, the, the reason why not Facebook is actually because um, they've been sort of dishing out some very strange, very vague sort of terms of service in terms of what they even allow on the platform. Um, I knew YouTube would actually allow it to stay because it was something which differed so much from the original that it wasn't going to like issue some bot takedowns on us. Facebook has been awfully strange about that because it doesn't really make sense when Facebook will do it, but when it does, it could just straight up remove our entire page. Right, so we're all sort of on eggshells over there with media yeah. content, then, right? Yeah, and then as for Pornhub, well, I mean, we 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 kind of we kind of tried that already with the previous video, and that didn't go so well. So that's all I'm going to say about that. Yeah, as it turns out, Pornhub's audience doesn't really want not porn on their site. And I mean, I know we've all seen like the, you know, the joke meme image of like the, of the porn up video of like Dave Mustaine saying like, you know, hot redhead fingers solo, <laughs> you know, <laughs> we've all seen that, but you know, I feel like that's a rare, that's, that's a rare case. Yeah. Yeah. I would imagine sharing links from Pornhub on Facebook would definitely be violating some term. 
of condition. I don't know if it actually is, to be honest. Oh, uh, I've tried it, and it didn't work. I have a Capital Chaos Pornhub page I, I created just for the hell of it, and I got some bands that I've uh, edited together and put up there, and it's uh, it's amusing, but for some reason, the, the videos they suggest around the bands are just like, whoa, they're not... They're not yeah, lesbians. We did try to host the Shot in the Gut 2 on Pornhub. <laughs> yeah, there was a lot of... Uh, see, the whole thing about it is trying to make it play towards, you know, the kind of things. And it ended up being with a lot of man-on-man uh, -man kind of videos. Just to say, like, it was... I mean, there's there's nothing inherently wrong with that, I would say. But, you know, I feel like a lot of the people watching those aren't necessarily going to want to see shot in the gut too i mean i'm i'm porn abstinent so i don't really know how that shit works but i guess it makes sense like you know there's no girls in our band so i guess it has to be on the gay hub stuff <laughs> gay hub oh, okay i'll have to check that out uh, it, you said it was like on the gay side right well that's what i was saying it's like it was a lot of uh it was a lot of uh man on man videos that that's the main thing uh, speaking of uh, naked men, um, have you guys all seen each other <laughs> naked? Um, I, f I don't think so. You can move that. the mic a little closer so. to your mouth. What's that? You can move the mic a little There you go. No. I don't think, um, I don't think we have. Um, I think, like, the closest to that, like, on tour is, like, shirtless or, like, just, um, like, uh, there was a pool we swam at at a house party. I was just in my boxers for that because I didn't have trunks. But What was the question? Uh, have we seen each other naked? That's what the I question mean, was. Not even, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, just, just like straight up, the closest I think we've gotten to that was just... Uh, well, there was, was the yeah. time you piss in a cup. Well, well I, was, I was behind the seat. That's, that's a little different. You know, I was just like... I don't think any of you guys are looking when I was doing that, no, but... No, that was the closest we got. We could have, but none of us were interested. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm not interested in any of you fools either, so... But the point being... The point being that Scotty did, in fact, piss in a cup once. That is true. That is true. I can confirm. No, I didn't mean that in a sexual way. I just said, you know, because in Europe, you know, in other parts of the world, uh, nudity is not that big of a deal. But here in no, America, no, that's it is. True. That's true. Like, I've been to Germany, and, like, you can actually just go to, like, a toy store, and immediately next to it is a sex shop. Like, there's just nobody cares. I know, like, the idea of a nudist camp always sound, very, appealed to me, uh, but I knew a guy that was a photographer from, there, from from a nude camp, and I saw the photos, and I was like, oh, look, it's my aunt. And my, my, <laughs> you know, if, you're, if you can imagine your uncle, not that you want to, but it's really, well, I don't you want know. to imagine my uncle in this. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't either. Even me knowing which one doesn't change yeah. it. Yeah, there was no porn stars or hookers. Like I had imagined it to be. Anyway, um, now the reaction video, which you've been able to monetize, appears to be performing very well. Is that right? Are you talking about the hate comment video? Yes, yes. You, I mean, obviously, you, you, know, um, you, you can't really monetize the Metallica video, but you can monetize your reaction video, right? Oh, have you noticed the ads on it now? I did, yeah, yeah, yeah. That and I, is, I think that's great that uh, those have been to added to the website or I guess the YouTube pretty much hours ago. Yeah, as of today, as of the data recording, we legit just it, it just happened today. Well, I think it's great because uh, I mean, monetization of your art, you know, your reaction video is uh, an art. Wouldn't you agree that reaction videos are art? Yeah. Yes. It was like. Because YouTube has that whole 10-minute video kind of thing, it was more likely to happen on that video than any of the others. We did try to make it work for Shot in the Gut, but YouTube kind of has a problem with irresponsible drinking. I mean, I wouldn't say that it would be irresponsible. I'd just say they can't handle it. <laughs> I mean, I can't argue with them. I'm not on their side here. <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, like, uh, that was a lot of fun to make. That was, um, I think we shot that over two, three days, something like that. But um, it was a lot of fun because the, 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 at the end of the day, we knew that there were going to be hate comments. We knew that people were not going to immediately give our cover a chance, given the nature of, you know, the bands that have all been on it, the bands that have all been 
well, the, the people who are all big fans of the band, like they, they feel some of them feel like you know Metallica can't do any wrong, and they know, like there was uh, there was more hate comments after that video than there was before it, and I remember we were kind of disappointed because in the original hate comment video, none of them were actually that bad, and then one guy recently dropped the one that actually finally got to us, and Scotty and I aren't even sure if it was hating. Yeah, basically, um, somebody said that we could be the Greta Van Fleet of Metallica. And that, that the whole thing is like, you know, it depends on how you look at that. Because, I mean, like, if you look at if you look at Greta Van Fleet as like a Led Zeppelin ripoff, that is a horrible compliment. Yeah. If you look at them as like, if you look at them like as somebody who's a fan of the band and a fan of their works, which, I mean... I'm not. I'm not gonna. I'm. I'm just gonna straight straight up say like I'm not really a fan of them. But it's to say like if it's been that way, then I guess it could be a compliment. Like but yeah. Better. But that that's the main thing, you know. Yeah. I mean, the thing is, I I cannot stand Greta Van Fleet. <laughs> it's like we already had that like a long time ago, and the fact that it's still coming up, it's more so because they refuse to acknowledge that Led Zeppelin was an influence of theirs. I mean, I've heard accounts from people who saw them opening up in bar shows, sort of acting like they were the shit and that they were above everybody. And half of their set list was just all Led Zeppelin covers, from what I've heard. And then, now that they have a record out that got really big, they're going to act like, Led Zeppelin, I've never heard of them. It's like, yeah, bullshit, you have. <laughs> and don't get me wrong, like, you know, the whole, like, being influenced by the greats is not a problem, and in my opinion, like... Contrary to uh, Mike Patton, praise to be under him. I I did love the shit. I did love the shit out of Wolf Mother back in the day, and I still kind of do like some of their stuff. Well, Wolf but Mother kind of broke out of that. Wolf Mother kind of broke out of that whole thing. Oh yeah, exactly. I mean, frankly, I mean, their first album, yeah, it's it's rampant of that. But like album two, like Cosmic Egg, they were their own thing, and they were really cool. That's just it. Like um. I feel like in general, like they they definitely have lost the momentum, and that's something. It's very clear with like for one that their third album they didn't their label didn't want to put it out. <laughs> that was just like legit what happened. But it's to say that like it, a lot of what that initial like hype was, and maybe that was just the two thousands, but that definitely is gone. But I still can remember their two their two albums that I liked. Nice, nice. Do you um do you guys ever fart while you're performing? Do we what? Do we fart while performing? Yeah. Um Yes, I am guilty of that. I have done that. I mean, probably. I don't know. <laughs> I've burped when performing, which that's a little bit harder because when you're like on the microphone singing, you have to be really good at kind of mixing it in with your scream so that nobody notices. I mean, it depends on the act too. I mean, I feel like if it if you're a uh, if you're like a grind band, that's probably not as big of a deal because that might like actually shift your tone to something you want, but. That's that's all I'd say about that. Like um, farting, yeah. I mean, it's it's natural. It's it's very natural. I I don't stigmatize that. Me and my girlfriend fart in front of each other all the Dude, time. Who, who who's gonna know? It's like so loud in there. <laughs> yeah, pretty yeah. much. How how often do you fart and uh, blame another band member? <laughs> um. <laughs> Um, I, I don't think I've done that. Not, not because, not saying I wouldn't do that, but I don't remember any instances of it. Uh, maybe, I'm not sure. <laughs> that's definitely, that's definitely a question we have not been asked before. I'll give you that. I've, I, 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 I find that's a pretty good question. Yeah, I wasn't prepared for that one. <laughs> so I have more. Um, can we expect more reimagines and reactions to, uh, hate comments videos? So... Reimagines. Um, to be perfectly honest, the way we stand on that, the uh, song itself definitely was a very like arduous process. There was a lot of things we ran into with like the issues of people that like weren't quite there for us when we needed them, and that's just it. Like you know, it's it was it was a hard, it was a long process. I mean, like I would say, like the the main thing we said about that is like. I, I wouldn't say that it's off the table, but it's I mean like the uh, more reimagines of like Metallica songs, especially off that album, it's probably going to be a while. And I mean, I just straight up say like if, if fans wanted them like right away, I mean, 
if we were commissioned, that's one thing. But like if it's but because like we have other material we're working on too, like it's not something that we're really looking to do. As for reacting to hate comments, I do think that we could end up doing an additional one of those, but eh, I don't know I, about that as much. Like the thing about the hate comment video is that as much as we like getting the hate comments, I don't exactly think our goal is usually to cause people to send us hate comments. This was kind of an exception because there just was no way around doing any kind of Metallica cover where you change how the song goes that doesn't attach itself to people just coming on and shitting on you. It's more so because um, we were expecting it that we just kind of primed ourselves like, well, we have to be ready for this to happen because when it does, it's going to be, obs it's going to be insane. And we did the video because it turned out to really not be as bad as we thought it would be. So we just thought it was funnier than it was just actually kind of like bad, if that makes sense. Either, although I don't exactly see myself doing that kind of video just all the time. It's like generally I prefer when people actually like what we do. Yeah, I mean, I suppose we're not filthy, Frank. Um, and uh, who would you replace in the big four and who would you replace them with? Oh, um, let me think about that. Yeah, I would replace Anthrax with Testament. I mean, I like Anthrax, but they got to go if it's going to be anybody. Uh, that's, that's vanilla. That's, that's really vanilla. Um, I'll, I'll tell you what, um, you want to go wrong, huh? I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to, I don't want to go wrong. What I want to say is that all of them need to go because the point of it being a big four and in general, I mean, that in itself and its nature is a very commercial thing and thrash should not be commercial. Therefore, I would just say, like, why, why call it a big four? I mean, the fact of the matter in general, I mean, I know it was something they were given, not something they did. I mean, I can't really say the same about some of the bands well, in, in our scene, okay, you know. So the, you remember the new Big Four? Look, yeah, the, yeah, that well, that was bullshit. Yeah. The, the Big Four isn't a completely just, like, subjective opinion-based thing at all. It's because Metallica, Megadeth, Slayer, and Anthrax were literally the four thrash bands that went at least gold during their prime, and none of the other bands have actually managed to get to that level, as legendary as they might be. So... To be asked, like, you know, which of the big four you would replace, like, I wouldn't even say it's because, you know, they just don't deserve the success they have. It's more so to say, like, this is a band I think should have sold enough to be part of that circle that just didn't for some reason. And for me, that would be Testament. Testament got slept on. All right. Well, then in that case, I would just, I would say this then. With your point in mind, I'm going to replace Metallica with Exodus. Ooh, nice! <laughs> I know, I know. They their first album was the best one they ever put out, but goddamn, is Bonded by Blood a good album? Yeah, and that and that first album sold more than Exodus ever can dream of selling. <laughs> I'm not denying that. Uh, which covers of Metallica songs by others do you like the best? By others, that's an interesting one. I'll have to think about that. Uh, let me think. Um. I know that Orbit Culture did yeah. did did one. They did Hardwired. Oh, oh yeah, you're right. I mean, Orbit Culture did did Hardwired, and that was pretty good. Um, let me think. What other ones? I mean, I got to think about that. To be perfectly honest, I mean, because I feel like a lot of a lot of those, like I feel that would be noted is like you know, I feel like a lot of bands that do like, oh, I got one. She took me a sec. Um. You know, um, Death did a cover of Battery, if I remember correctly, on their last album. That was pretty good, too. Yeah, I have to think about, it, like, Metallica covers I've heard that haven't just been hot garbage. Like, <laughs> this... like uh, Mac Macedon did Orion, I think. Um... Oh, yeah. yeah, that was good, too. Honestly, though, that was kind of weird because they were using the same tone that they were for Blood Mountain, and that tone was very compressed and like shortened because Braun is basically just playing the kit like he's swatting angrily at like a swarm of bees. And then when he starts playing like Lars Ulrich beats, you can see hear just how dampened the kit is. I, I don't know. It wasn't my favorite, but it wasn't bad. I think if we're talking favorites, uh I gotta go with Motorhead's Whiplash. Oh yeah, I forgot about that one. Uh, which songs that Metallica has covered 
do you like the best? So that's a good, that's a good question. I, I like, uh, I like a lot of their covers actually. It's like, I think it's kind of a cop out just to go with a song that, you know, they, they've covered a lot of songs that were eh, okay. And then they just made them like just slam, but they've done that so frequently that it's hard to say. I'm more so like, I like astronomy, like songs that a song that was already great, but then somehow they made it better, which is just testament to how they are. So like astronomy was really good. I liked Lover Man a lot, the Nick Cave song, because like I actually like the original one, and most of the time I would sort of feel it defeats the purpose to do a much more hi-fi, like better, super rich production quality version of like a song that was intentionally supposed to sound incredibly fringe, but in a way, like it was, they just decided it was going to be a completely different song if they did it. So that's probably my top two contenders. Loverman for Nick Cave and Astronomy Blue Oyster Cult. Yeah, in my case, I mean, I I feel like this is probably a very vanilla one. I like their whiskey in the jar cover, just in particular, like having an appreciation for Irish folk music, having been to the country. They killed it. They really did. Oh, no, no, no. If you want to go vanilla, you'd say, am I evil? Oh, well, Matt, fair enough, fair enough. I mean... I'm trying to remember what which misfit songs they did. I, I'm pretty sure it was died. Caress or the Green Hell. Oh, I I would. I, it's been a while since I've heard that, but I I would imagine that Green Hell would probably be. I imagine they would they would like just kill that one. To be honest, that's a good one. They actually had to specifically ask uh, Danzig for the lyrics to that song because they weren't printed anywhere. And when they saw the lyrics, they actually talked about cracking up in the van because like, what was like, one of the lyrics was like, feel it in your cereal or something. I mean, feel it in your cereal, green hell, green hell. Yeah. I mean, I wouldn't say, I wouldn't say that Danzig is the best at lyrics. I would definitely not disagree with that. At the same time, I feel like, um, I mean, I used to do a show where we talked about this a lot. I mean, a lot of his stuff was toned back intentionally because Jerry only, he wanted it to be a family-friendly kind of thing, which Danzig what? hated. That just did is, like, J- Jerry only, like, legit wanted, he wanted the band to, like, appeal to a wide market. He didn't want it. Misfits. Yes. That's what I'm saying. He only wanted it to be family-friendly. Misfits. Well, Misfits was never family friendly. I'm not saying they were. I'm just saying that's what direction that he wanted to take it because Danzig wanted to go more in that direction, and that's that's the main thing is that that's a big part of why he eventually left the project. It's why like some of his that, other- that might all, that might also explain why we remember a bit more of Danzig's after career than we do of the Misfits after career. I mean, I don't. Yes and no because I do like the I do like the um why is his name why is his Michael name Michael Graves I mean, I've, yeah I've, I, I, yeah I'm over here like I've opened for him how am I forgetting this um <laughs> but yeah I I do like his era I mean I I really do the band the band went more in a heavy metal direction and that actually worked pretty good for them in my opinion but outside of that I mean like the stuff with just only on the mic like eh, not not so much not so much at all. <laughs> And um, does Lars Ulrich's drumming really suck as bad as many people say? Uh, actually, no. It's worse. <laughs> I mean, I would I would say this um, from my experience listening to the new album, which I mean, like Hardwired was a pretty good album in my opinion, but the drumming definitely was something because it's to say like. He's over there, and I mean, like, me having played thrash drums in, like, in suburban paranoia, like, you have that, you know, like, dun da dun da dun da dun da you know, it's their normal, like, kind of thrash beat. He was always slightly off on the kicks, like, every time he did that, and that just did his, like, it was there. I can't believe they didn't fix that. Okay, I really so can't. Are, are you talking about the way it actually sounds on the album? No, I'm ta- I'm saying he's literally off time. No, I mean, how it sounds on the album, yes. right? You're... Well, the thing is, they did fix it. So here's my here's what I was going to say is, if you really want a good example of what Lars's drumming actually sounds like, there are 
all of these behind the scenes sort of documentary type things they released on YouTube about them actually making the songs in the studio. And a lot of people are still trying to sort of def- come to Lars Ulrich's defense as saying like, well, he's like the best drummer for Metallica. Like, you know, he's not that bad. Like I hear a lot worse from local bands, but no, like, there are actual moments where they're listening back to the recordings that they've already laid in the studio. And like, when you hear it, you know, like it, that is actually as bad as it really is. His timing is nowhere close to what it is. It's like, it, as much as it sounds like the timing was slightly off on hardwired, when you like, when you see the behind the scenes, you realize that actually was edited. <laughs> it was that complicated to edit it so it sounded at least a little bit in time because it was even worse before that. Oh, God. Well, th- thanks for thanks for ripping that Band-Aid off, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but that's the thing. is like A lot of people will still kind of come to Lars's defense as saying that, you know, they don't, like, a, a lot of people legitimately think they don't edit their drums, that they don't edit anything that they do at all. Like, maybe they don't edit the vocals, which... You know, some albums they definitely do, like the Black Album. But as far as the drums, the drums have never not been edited. Like, there was maybe a few songs on Kill 'Em All that they didn't, but after that, every other album of theirs has been edited like crazy. And people like to just believe that Lars was actually a god in the 80s. But I don't think there's anything wrong with him not being a god. I think, you know, people just kind of got to be a little bit more honest with themselves. In a way... If people if they were able to get away with that and make people think that that was really the drumming behind it, then I think it's important that more people know that there is editing on those albums because it will cause more bands to sort of step out of that feeling like they have to be perfect or else it's not worth putting themselves to record. Huh. Pretty much what I thought and, good, good, good. And uh, uh, which of the online music services has been the most useless? And uh, is Reverb Nation still a thing? Yes, Reverb Nation is still a thing. That is correct. Okay, so what, what was the? And he was asking, like, you, that was at which on- music online service is the most useless? Correct. Yes. Uh, Napster. <laughs> <laughs> Look, nobody goes to Napster anymore. You don't know anybody who goes to Napster. <laughs> I mean, uh, outside of that. Um... I know that, like, I've I've looked into, like, because just in general, like, I know that MySpace was bought and somebody's been trying to, like, really make that be, like, a big, like, oh, it's a place for music kind of thing. Like, it still is pretty barren, too, unfortunately, which, you know, that is what it is. But um, Reverb Nation's still a thing. We've honestly had some things that we've submitted there that have come about that have come up in our favor, like, in particular... There was a uh, magazine that we submitted ourselves for that we ended up on. I don't remember the publication's name, but we did that, and then we won a we won a Wham award as a result of submitting ourselves to that. So it's not useless, but it's to say, like you know, I feel like that has more to do with the fact that maybe there's I mean we're a good band in a sea of either new bands or not that many bands in general that are using it these days. So. That's the way I look at it. Reverb Nation is still useful. I just don't think it's a one-stop shop like it was trying to be back in the early 2010s. It's like you pretty much go on there. You uh, sign up for the opportunities you want. You keep up to date with the mailing list of people who subscribe to you. And then you get the fuck out. It's like I have better luck running the, the mailing list subscribers on our own website than I do on Reverb Nation. But they do collect it for us. Yeah, it's just it's funny too because I remember back in the day it was all about oh hey like your band's on here you want to be the number one band in like this area it's like yeah, you know been, we've been the number one band we've been the number one band for like the last four years on our area yeah basically that's it, it's it's interesting because like back in my old band days that was something that was like oh man guys we got to push Hypergiant to be number one in Brentwood it's like oh wait Toy Called God is there shit you know <laughs> yeah. This uh, one, huh? Who is uh, who's number two? I have no idea. <laughs> um, well, that's a term you use when uh, you have to, uh, you know, do your business when nature calls. So, I mean, I, I, that's what number two is. <laughs> so shit. I I don't know. I've never really gone digging into the Reverb Nation ranking list. I don't I don't really put a whole lot of stock into that. <laughs> 
Well, that's good. Well, uh, it's been very, it's been fun and uh, very informative. Uh, for some reason, it looks like um, um, uh, the signal uh, is uh, getting weak and the video is starting to buffer and stuff. Um, what's uh, just uh, what's next for a Gershock for the rest of the well? It's only what a month and a half of 2020. Is there a, 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 a a Thank one year God. plan. <laughs> we do have a uh, we do have another song we're planning and releasing sometime soon. But we did sign an NDA on that, so we can't say what it is. But that's going to be the first thing we release. Is like, and this is just going to be kind of like not as insanely promoted as Dead Skin Man or not the Saint Ooh. Anger. So it's like after Saint Anger, like that one was a huge explosive one. But then we have another song that comes afterwards. And that's just going to be kind of like, you know, to tide people over. But the, uh, after that, we're actually doing something pretty cool for like an anime intro type song, which is, I think, the one I'm looking forward to. Yeah, it's all going to be a matter of putting all that together. I mean, that's not the only thing we're working on for sure. I'd just say that there, there's going to be plenty you're going to hear from us as, as things keep going. And the funny thing I note is every time we do something, it keeps getting better and better. So just the moral story is. So we're gonna we're gonna tour over in like Delaware. We're gonna tour in Idaho, and then we're gonna tour in we're gonna tour in Wisconsin and Michigan. And then we're gonna tour in California and Arizona. Then we're going to the White House and take it back. Yeah.